Welcome to the fourth and last video of the Grant Writing 101 video series. My name is Joel Christensen. I'm with the Community Development Unit of Alberta Culture, Multiculturalism and Status of Women. Before I begin, I'd like to mention that our goal in this video series is to give you the knowledge to improve your proposal and grant writing skills and be able to apply these skills and improve your future applications. The intent for you is to walk away with at least one new tip or piece of information that will help you when thinking about developing and sustaining your community project or initiative. Also, the information is presented and aimed at an introductory level or as a refresher for those who want to apply for grants and be successful in their applications. We have some related resources to this video that we can share with you. In the description of the video, there is a link to the grant writing toolkit that provides additional links and resources that we think are helpful for you and your nonprofit organization as you are planning for your grants. Included in this toolkit is also a copy of the slide deck we use for this video. You can also hit the subscribe button down below and turn the notification on to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notification about our upcoming videos. I'd also like to mention before we start that the information offered in this video and the related materials are not intended to constitute consulting or other professional services of any kind. We are not funders, nor do we have any authority or oversight over funding decisions. The information we are sharing is based on research and discussions with various funders, and we think will help you as you complete your grant applications. By the end of part four of the Grant Writing 101 video series, you will be able to recognize the importance of accountability to funders, identify practical tips to write and polish grant applications. So let's get started on Grant Writing 101 Part 4 video. In previous videos, we covered the preparation and research stage in a project. We covered developing a grant proposal for that project, where you can find funding sources, and how you can get to know funders and why it is important. In the next few slides, we'll focus on the application process. Before you start writing, if it's helpful, print the grant proposal, even if you're completing it online. It may be easier to read and edit a document in hard copy. Read through the application completely and make notes if necessary. Once you know the deadline, start planning backwards to figure out the key dates you need to get things done by. For example, when you need to present the proposal to your board in order to get the signed motion needed for the application. What letters of support are needed? Who's going to get those letters of support? And by when? Use a checklist to ensure that you've included everything that is being asked for in the application or request for proposal. Some funders provide one, but if not, then create your own. A grant application checklist is a useful tool that can help ensure that you haven't forgotten anything. Remember, if you're missing something in the application, you risk the entire application being rejected. Now let's focus a moment on the actual grant application or request for proposal, RFP. Just to make sure that we're all on the same page, an RFP is a document that announces and provides details about a project. It also outlines the bidding process by which proposals are solicited. It always helps to carefully read and reread as necessary the application to make sure that you are familiar with everything that is being asked. There may be sections where you know you'll have an easier time responding and other sections where you may have to budget more time to get it done or perhaps gather additional information up front or consult with someone else such as a colleague for example in order to be able to fully answer the question if the funder offers an rfp or a grant information session go to it you may glean additional information that will help you these info sessions are designed by the funder to ensure that applicants have a clear understanding of how to fill out the application and provide applicants with an opportunity to ask questions. If you have questions, ask them. Don't be shy. Another strategy is once you've written a draft, get someone else to proofread it and give feedback. Can you answer the question in the grant application form or RFP? If not, why not? Take a step back and a deep breath. Review the project and your readiness. Review the fit with this grant. 
Now, in terms of responding to the question on the grant application, grant writers can use elements of their proposals they prepared earlier to apply for grants. Make sure to always operate under the assumption the funder knows nothing about your organization or project or initiative. Don't make them hunt for the information. This is truly annoying for a grant reviewer. Remember, they're reading multiple applications. While you may have beautifully bound professional printed proposals, the funder is still going to be scoring you on the answers to the grant application questions or based on the criteria outlined in the request for proposal. So you have to give them what they want and in the format they ask for it. Remember, there's a reason why funders ask for specific things they do in the application. And there's a reason why they have a list of what needs to be included. You could automatically be eliminated if you don't provide it. If you need to refer to an attachment in your application or proposal, be very clear. Specify which attachment, what page, even which paragraph if possible. But before you do that, make sure you aren't taking the easy way out by just referring the reader to the appendix. You should always try to answer the question, if and when possible, in the actual grant application. It makes it easier for the reader reviewing your application. As in life, there is more than one way to peel an apple or answer the questions on a grant application. However, in terms of the grant application, make sure that you answer the questions in a way that helps you to persuade the grant reviewer or review committee that your application is the one they want to fund. So just like a job seeker's resume, in relation to a potential employer, a grant application speaks louder when it's customized to the needs of the funder. It's a lot harder to persuade a grant review committee to fund your project if your application or proposal doesn't provide completed answers, you confuse them with the number and location of attachments, your answers are full of run-on sentences and are difficult to understand, you don't provide any outcomes or benefits for the project, and if the info or key contacts is old and outdated. These are just some additional things to keep in mind and ensure you have addressed when you proofread your application before submitting it. Let's look at some helpful budget tips. The RFP or application will typically include a list of eligible or ineligible expenses. Make sure that you haven't included any expenses that are ineligible. The grant application may also include a budget template that applicants should use. Before using your own budget template, check with the funder first. There may be a reason why they want you to use their specific format. For example, they want a consistent format that grant review committee members are able to easily understand. Have someone double check your numbers before you submit. Ask yourself, do you have a rationale for how you came up with your numbers? Would you be able to explain it if asked? There are a few sections in the toolkit that talk about some helpful practical tips for writing a grant application when you're applying for funding. These tips speak to doing your homework, not cutting corners, being clear and honest in your application, ensuring good communication with the funder, and using the funding for the right reasons. We suggest you go to the toolkit and review those sections for when you want to write your application. Make sure you read the entire call for proposals or grant application before you start. And it's also a good idea to read what's on the funder's website before you begin to see what you can glean from it. If you aren't sure about something, make sure you ask and ask again. Remember to consider attending the RFP or grant information session if there is one. Funders host these sessions to communicate program information, application procedures, and review processes details in prospective applicants. It's also a time for prospective applicants to ask questions. Remember, timelines do really matter. So do the funders' deadlines to submit the application. If you have to miss a deadline, communicate early. You may have an urgent life event coming up. That's reasonable. So just explain why you should miss the deadline. For example, you can't make the information session or submit a letter of intent and do that on time. Don't hide mistakes. Be upfront. Just be honest and explain. Return any calls and emails from the funder promptly. Don't use jargon in your grant application. 
be clear and make it easy for the reviewer or review committee members to read and understand your application. Always know who your contact with the funder is. Be honest with yourself about your capacity to deliver before you receive the funds. Otherwise, you may lose your credibility with the funder. Don't use short-term dollars for long-term plans. Funders are usually clear on what the grant dollars can be used for. It's not a good idea to use funding for something that's out of scope. The next few slides include some tips for writing the grant application. When writing grant applications or proposals, a good tip to remember is to think about the three C's, clarity, conciseness, and coherence. The application or proposal should be simple and straightforward. Think about the person who is reviewing your grant application. You want them to be able to easily read, understand, and navigate your application. Rethink how you write the proposal. In school, many of us learned to write using essay style where we introduce our topic, provide facts, rationale, etc., for the topic, and then finish with a conclusion or key message or main point. You'll note that many RFP and grant applications limit the number of pages or even the number of words you can use. So we need to rethink how we write. Think of a news article. They start with the key message or most important information then provide more detail, ending with the least important information at the end. Your proposal, even your answers to specific application questions, should follow this business style of writing. So let's move on now to some overall general advice. Ask someone who isn't familiar with the project or your organization to proofread your proposal or application. If the proposal or application makes sense to them, then there's a good chance it will make sense to a funder. If, on the other hand, they're confused, then it's a good chance the funder will also be confused. Don't forget to confirm that all required information is included in the application. This is where a grant application checklist comes in handy so you can review everything to confirm the application is complete. Remember, an incomplete application could be rejected outright before it even makes it to the grant review committee if it's missing mandatory elements. Here are a few more points on applying. Make sure to get your application in on time. If it's late, the funder is not obligated to accept it. If it's an option, hand deliver the application or send it by courier, whatever it takes to get there on time. Once you've submitted, if the project changes scope or timelines, notify the funder immediately. Even if you haven't heard back, whether you have been awarded the grant or not. Okay, maybe you weren't successful this time. However, you can still learn something. Just like after a job interview where you didn't end up landing the job, it's still a great idea to ask for feedback. Find out why your grant application wasn't successful so you can learn from the experience. Here is a high level summary of the different steps and categories we've covered in this four part video series so far. Preparation and research, developing and writing proposals and plans, exploring, identifying and getting to know your funding source and applying for the grant. So based on what we've covered and reflecting on your own experience, which step or category do you think you need to work on the most for your next grant application or proposal? Okay, let's imagine you got the grant. Congratulations. But there are some things you should remember related to accountability and follow-up. You see specifics on accountability and follow-up on the slides. The detail in the slide is important to have as a reference. However, I'm going to summarize the slide by saying a few things. Carry out your project and get it done. Do it on time. Be prepared to bring forward the funds and volunteers that you committed on the application in order to get it done. Funders don't like surprises, so make sure to notify your contact if anything significant changes. Take the opportunity to share some anecdotes or interesting facts about the project with the funder when it's complete in addition to the mandatory reporting at the end. So let's talk a bit more about reporting. 
Make sure your financial reporting is complete and well organized. Keep copies of anything with the logo or mention of the funder. For example, your internal newsletters or any news articles that feature the project. Don't forget to track volunteer time on the project or program. And remember your measurable outcomes. Measure them. Funders also want to be able to report on the outcomes for the grants they fund for their leadership and their stakeholders. It's a good idea to provide copies of community support you receive regarding the project and program. For example, letters, social media mentions, etc. This is something that will be of interest to the funder. A thank you card, letter, or something else that is tangible to acknowledge the support that you got from the funder in order to carry out the project is a nice way to end the project. Let's move on to your relationship with the funder. You now have entered into a relationship with the funder, so treat it like you would any other meaningful relationship. Do what you said you were going to do. Report in when and how you agreed to. Communicate with your funder. Let them know if and when issues arise. They will work with you to help resolve them. Many funders keep files and track you. You cannot apply again if you did not report before on an earlier grant. It's always better to ask for permission than for forgiveness. Funders allocate money for a specific purpose and you need to ensure that you stay within that purpose. Okay, we're almost at the end of our time together. So let's do a quick high level summary of what we've covered today. Writing grants takes time and commitment. Doing the research and allocating enough time to go through an application will do a lot to help you set up for success. It's not effective to look for projects that fit funding. What I mean by this is looking for a random grant to apply for and then trying to find a way to develop a project that will fit the eligibility criteria isn't a particularly efficient or useful way to go about things. It's far more effective to do the research to find a funder whose mandate aligns with yours and to plan it out. Remember your return on investment calculation. And finally, investing time in developing a relationship with a funder can pay huge dividends. This brings us to the end of the last video on Grant Writing 101. Thank you for watching. Our contact information is on the slide and they are in the toolkit as well. If you are in Alberta and you have a question, you need further information, or would like to request our services, you can contact us through email and phone. You can also contact the Community Grants Unit about various grants for nonprofit organizations from the Government of Alberta. You can also access our website to know more about our resources and services. And also, if you want to be more informed about our future services and resources, you could add your email address to our subscription form and you will receive information about our services and resources as they become available. The link to the subscription form is in the description of the video as well. Thank you for your attention. Take care, stay healthy, and always remember that our communities have so much more because of everything you do. Thank you all and bye for now.